Hey girl, so today we got to get into the drama a little bit. This is, you know, a break from my usual spiritual programming just to get a little bit messy, okay? Just a little bit. Some of the biggest RuPaul's Drag Race black queens have gone under fire, you know, for being in relationships with white people. Now, I'll bring up the Twitter post. This all started when a Twitter page titled The Colorist Page. This is Truth Speaker 02, um, and it reads as follows. Black drag queens and their fascination with having a white partner. Here's a thread that takes a deep dive, that takes, that takes a deep dive black, here's a thread that takes a deep dive black drag queens in their unhealthy relationship with whiteness, okay? <laughs> I'm sorry, just a little typo there. Um, but you, <laughs> not that like people aren't allowed to have typos cause I'm a typo girl, but let me, it's just if I'm gonna post a thread if I'm gonna post a thread with edited photos and pictures and references, there's not gonna be anything wrong with it. But I digress, right? So this thread goes on to, and you know, y'all can find it on Twitter. It's very easy to look at. You know, I might even leave a, leave a, and I'll probably even leave a link in the description bar for you if you wanna check it out. But yeah, then this person goes on to find, you know, a number of what I would say is like inflammatory things that some of these drag queens have said, and they obviously like conflate it with them having like a toxic relationship to whiteness and exclusively wanting white people. Now, some of the drag queens, some of the drag queens came back and said, and even other people in the Twitter spaces came back and said, you know, um, but what about the black community's, you know, relationship to femphobia, which I think is another important point to be brought up when we're speaking about this thing. However, that doesn't necessarily mean that they have to go and run off to white people. No tea, no shade. You know, there's a number of other races that could have been thrown into the mix, right? However, my two cents on this topic is I just find it weird. I just find it weird how, you know, some of these queens, you know, have been very like pro-black and have like served as, you know, um, markers of representation in drag race and have had very black, you know, unapologetically like black drag. They've had town halls and open discussions and actively call out the racism and whatnot within the drag race fan base. But when we bring up, you know, them having a white partner, it seems that sometimes like all that work is like it's like disregarded. It happens a lot where somebody, you know, who's working as a visionary or a disruptor or a healer or an organizer, you know, or a community organizer, you know, or filling out one of the myriad of roles that a person can do when, you know, fighting for the culture and fighting for black liberation, but they have a white partner and then we have these people and these figureheads come along and bring that out. And now people like disregard all the other work that they've done. Which again is weird to me because again, we know that many of these queens have actively spoken about, you know, the the racism within drag race. And then there's even, I think this is uh, Peppermint, where Pep there's a quote, there's a video of Peppermint in here talking about how when she goes to certain events, you know, they want her to be super ghetto and da 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 and whoop de whoop wop de wop and all this, yeah girl, and all of this. But then they bring up, oh, but you know, you have grace for white people in your relationship, which is like, those things aren't mutually exclusive. And like, she's not building a relationship with, you know, a queer event organizer. She's building, building a relationship with this person, this one person, you know what I mean? And that's, it just, it was just so weird. The way that this was like pulled together with some of the most inflammatory things now, RuPaul's little tidbit, again, look at the tweet. I'm not gonna talk about that and like uh, Bob the Drag Queen, you know, saying that race play is hot. I don't, I can't, I can't help them out. <laughs> okay, with the exclusion of those two, okay? I'm not about to get into those two, but the rest of the girls, people have been saying that they chase whiteness. To say that these people chase whiteness? Chasing whiteness? Because they have a white partner. Again, that's very extreme. That's just very extreme to me. And one of the things that kind of struck me is that like, what is it? Um, I was gonna say Monet Exchange, but Shea Coulee, there's a clip of her talking about, you know, how like black people, she didn't feel like validated and beautiful and attractive, you know, around like a black queer man, but white men made her feel that way. Now, people were saying that, you know, that's not necessarily the fault of the black community. Right, which again, all this stuff is like, it's very like complex is what I'm going to say. You know, it's kind of hard to divvy this 
it up in something that's clear, like nice and tidy, in my opinion. There are, there are black men, there are black and queer men, you know, who find like feminine black and queer people attractive, just without a shadow of a doubt. Now, I, that's not to disregard her experience. Her experience is her experience and she's gotta build a life off of her experience, yes or no, right? And I think that the problem with her saying that and a lot of people's gripe, which I completely understand is when you say, thing like, say things like that, it makes it seem as like the white community is more accepting of like, you know, feminine, gay and queer people, which is not the truth, which is not the truth. And other people say, well, where do you think those things came from? They definitely came from white people. They definitely came from white people. They definitely came from white supremacy. Absolutely, without a shadow of a doubt. You know what I mean? And gay white men, I think that they're the number one perpetrators of things like femphobia, right? However, who created it is beyond, <laughs> you know, the point. Is beyond the point. It's about who's perpetrating it. And then even like about who's perpetrating. I just don't, I feel like I get wrapped up in these conversations and I'm like, what am I talking about? You know what I mean? Because like at the end of the day, like, I've been in love a number of times and there's no rhyme, there's no reason, there's no political agenda to who I fall in love with. And I feel like a lot of people feel the same way. And that's just my opinion. I think it is anti-black, you know, to look at these black people and say that they don't have proper judgment about picking partners, which may or may not be true, but I still feel like that that sentiment is anti-black in itself. And secondarily, you know what I mean? They should be not denying themselves love for a healthy partnership because it's not a, a, a BIPOC person, which is, which is what it sounds like to me. It just sounds like that a lot of people are upset that this group of black queens don't have partners who are black or people of color. I'm gonna just keep it a buck. That's what it sounds like to me. Because if they had another partner who wasn't that, we wouldn't be having this conversation. But I do think it's interesting. And like somebody had brought up the point about proximity, you know, because if you were going to travel, if you were if you were to go to like a ballroom space, there are tons of, you know, like black men in there who, who live for the femme girls, who live for the femme queens, right? But again, there's just like, again, I just get so tired of having these conversations because it comes with all these stipulations. Oh, well, you can find a person of color who likes you if you go to these certain spaces or exist in these certain rooms. And so you just throw all these rules and stipulations and things on top of somebody finding love, which again, there's no rhyme, no reason. And I do think like proximity is a thing. Like what spaces are you navigating in? What spaces are you going to? What spaces do you frequent? But all spaces are not the same and all people do not have access to all spaces. You know what I mean? So, so why did, like at the end of the day, why does it fucking matter? Why does it fucking matter? Like, like, and, and I try to like get behind it and you know, cause I do see it. I do see the value in like having conversations like this just to have a discussion and opening our eyes about, you know, how white supremacy and racism and you know, queer phobia are still at play. They're still at play. And that's still something that we all have to navigate through. Right, but to fault these black queens and to ignore the relationship that all of those things have with one of another, that seems daft. It seems goofy to me. I'm just keeping it a bead. It just seems goofy to me. And the way whenever somebody says, oh, but you have a white partner and then they get thrown into the deep end <laughs> of a tank of piranhas, of people who are just like toxic chewing at them. It's, it's very weird to me. It's very weird to me. Yeah, um, but let me know what y'all think. Another thing that I do want to say is that like, I'm not a journalist or a reporter, so everything is here, you know, is just the brief amount of research that I've done. <laughs> um, I do know that there were a number of like live sessions and Twitter spaces where, you know, some of the drag queens and other, you know, public figures and social media spaces had gathered together to have a conversation. Excuse me. I was not present for any of those, but if you were, let me know what I'm missing and what conversations excuse me, and what statements were had down in the comment section. I would love to hear about like what y'all know, what I may be missing. And do you fear differently from me? Because again, like I just want to stand 10 toes on that like love and like relationships have no rhyme or reason. And being in a relationship with the white person doesn't necessarily negate, you know, all the other work that you're doing. You know what I mean? 
Um, but yeah, that's it. Thank y'all, cause like I was, I was really fighting making a video on this, but I just had to get it off my chest. But thanks for watching. My name is Mo. If you want to get more spiritual content, or if you're even into the hot topics and whatnot, let me know down in the comment section. Subscribe to this channel because I'll definitely be making more videos. And until next time, this is XMO. Bye.